<laughs> what is one alcohol you'll never drink again? Kentucky Deluxe. I hadn't had it for years because I always said I'd never touch it again. Then I moved into a new place with my then BF and his best friend. We'd sunk a lot of money into deposits and whatnot so celebratory funds were tight for the housewarming party. Kentucky Deluxe entered the chat. I woke up the next day remembering every single reason I ever swore that Satan piss off. Fuck KD. I'm an alcoholic but if the last bottles of liquor in the world are KD, you'll be seeing me sober. There was a handle of it at my old job that we used to make a limited time bacon bourbon marmalade and while it was free for anyone to take if they wanted it, it just sat there on a shelf gathering dust. Bailey's Irish Creme Liquor, used to love it but an unfortunate incident which involved the entire floor of my dorm attempting, and succeeding, to get me wasted resulted in me spewing my guts out from both ends and unfortunately turned me off to this forever. Even thinking about the smell of Bailey's makes me queasy so after more than 15 years. In the beer world there are a few styles that you'll avoid, goes lighter style of beer made to have a bit of saltiness yeah that just doesn't work for me fruit beer with the exception of ipes even then so sparingly beer brewed with fruit is just awful notable offenders are beers like sam adams cherry wheat or abbott's raspberry wheat yuck fruity notes in an ipe usually are the result of the hops being used and most often not even made with fruit also Anything beer labeled prickly pear, beer made with cactus, just, why, sours, I've tried to enjoy sour beer, wild ales, berliner wurzes, flanders red, I just can't, a standard saison, farmhouse sale is a close as I can get, but I do understand their appeal, there is a great rustic, old timey appeal to them, wild fermented, but just not for me, Belgian beers, I actually love these styles, Abbey Ales slash double slash triple slash quads dot 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 etc. But I find that these particular styles give me horrible indigestion. I don't know if it's the higher amounts of yeast, sugar that are these styles are known for, or the particular strains of yeast they use. But I can't drink these beers without having to down half a bottle of Tums afterward. Burnett's Iced Tea Flavored Vodka I was given shots of whiskey that was intentionally tainted with something that made me puke all night. Unfortunately the Burnets was the last thing I drank before feeling ill dot 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 so my brain associated it with being ill. I can't even look at the bottle without feeling a little ill. Same with any other brand of iced tea flavored alcohol. 99 apples and 99 bananas. Stuff is beyond toxic. Unfortunately. I was gifted a bottle of each which are both about 95% full yet and I don't really want to waste them. Even if they are the worst things I've ever had the displeasure of consuming, I just have no clue what to do with them. Jodger Meister, I drunk half a bottle at a festival then blacked out, tried jumping in the back of an ambulance whilst they were treating someone, got dragged back to a friend's and house tried fighting his friend at the time had sex with my girlfriend in my friend's bathroom and once we finished I told her not to tell my girlfriend who is in the next room, basically cheated on her with her, and woke up about 6 miles across the city at a party house on the sofa with no recollection at all. Cider, worked in a pub and we had a staff meeting at 10 am, as it was kinda full on and not pleasant, the landlord said we could drink for free for the rest of the day. From 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. I drank nothing but cider. He sent me home as my shift was due to start at 6 p.m. Went home, tried to sleep, threw my guts up which looked like pure black tar, ate a little and went back to work. I was only 16 and my job was collecting glasses and emptying ashtrays. You best believe he told rest of the staff to not touch any glasses or empty ashtrays before I got in and left it all to me. On a busy summer Sunday afternoon there was so much to do and he really ran me ragged for 3 hours straight. When I finally caught up he let me go home early. 
I started my first day of art college the next day with alcohol poisoning, the other is tequila. My ex and I threw a dinner party and I was cooking up a Mexican banquet. Our guests brought bottles of tequila but no one was drinking as they had work the next day. As it was my day off the following day I drank two bottles of tequila, six bottles of Corona and half a bottle of wine. Woke up the next day to my ex screaming at me for looking at porn on the laptop. Didn't even know I had done it. She dragged me out of bed and had me run errands with her all day. Had to stop the car every 20 minutes or so, so I could puke. Not fun. Crown Royal. After a party my friends who had not passed out yet found a handle of crown that we somehow missed. The three of us drank until it tasted like grapes and the sun came up. I was sick for two days and can't look at the stuff without being reminded of that night. Also going to Denny's after a night of drinking and running into the early Sunday church crowd made it worse with the scent of grandma perfume in the air. <laughs> Ginger bombs, vodka. Especially in that combination, had a period in life where this was my to-go drink. Got drunker than I've ever been a few years back in Prague for a school trip. I was 18 plus though. When the bartender offered me free and discounted ginger bombs with vodka shots. Around number 14 I realized I needed to stop. But I still had one in my hand and figured I'd finish it or it would be a waste. Woke up in a bunk bed next to a friend. Pushed myself up. Reached over them and puked. Didn't hit my friend but watched it run down the wall into her open suitcase. Room had to be emptied due to the smell. We shared it with about 10 people. Teachers were called and I got put under the shower with clothes on. Had to sober up on a sofa in the lobby. Next day, I felt fine. Everyone else was pissed and tired and I realized my drinking affected everyone around me. To be honest, that night was the eye-opener and I've had a few drinks at most after that night. And only at home when we have a party. And even then I stopped before the point of being drunk. Drinking to the point of vomiting and bothering everyone around you isn't cool, it's not something to brag about, though it makes for a strong story that friends often bring up and joke about. It's one of the most shameful nights in my memory. Never again. <laughs> Cheap vodka. Had a belter of a night and then alcohol poisoning and nearly lost my job the morning after. Was still drunk or very hungover at an important dollar multi-million pitch meeting which my boss also attended. I think I reeked of booze. It turns my stomach to even consider it. Grey Goose on the other hand. That's different. Not me, but a former brother-in-law. Apparent absinthe can make you have really vivid dreams. And one night, he drank absinthe and had a dream where my nephew, his son, drowned in a public pool in plain sight of the lifeguard. It felt so real he woke up in tears and had to check that his son was still in his respective room alive and breathing. He never drank absinthe again after that. Port. First thing I got really drunk on. Fell out of the hay loft in a barn. No real damage. But sore and then had to walk a couple of miles home in very hot weather the next day. My head was pounding and I vomited a couple of times while walking home. In the 40 odd years since I have not touched port, the mere smell brings it all back. You don't know man, you weren't there. Svedka strawberry lemonade. Drank a whole fifth by myself on night cause I thought I knew how to mix drinks without the help of my BF. Lol. I was crawling around in the floor giggling. Woke up the next morning and puked it back up. All just clear vodka. I had food that night. Not sure where it went and how the vodka stayed. Kovalsir. I don't know why I even drank it in the first place. I always stink and hated it. But it didn't take much to get me tipsy or drunk. So I drank it all the time. Until the night I drank $89 of it to myself. Absolutely horrible. I got really mean and wanted to fight everyone. My wife had to endure my ranting and anger at the world. Puked for three days afterwards. I mean just stinking horrible. Stopped completely after that. Been sober for 16 months now. Vanadala. 
It was Eurovision night and as a good religious worker I had to get to church next morning, so obviously as a good Christian and theologian and youth worker and what not, I got blasted with a bottle of Vanitalin that I got from my parents without their permission, that shit tastes like rubber and lost dreams. Not the worst hangover, not the worst hangover I have spent in a chuck, but the worst tasting one easily. Not even close in my entire 54 plus years, Chinzano Bianco. On 9 1984 I decided that after pounding through three Carlsberg special brews, yes, those things, I would inhale, because I basically did, two bottles of that shite. Mixed with some Coca-Cola. Shockingly I was extremely sick and was taken to a hospital in South London. I still cannot even deal with the smell of that awful liquid. My dad gave me a shot of Jaeger when I was about 8 as a last ditch effort after two miserable weeks of barely any sleep due to the whooping cough. No cough medicine had helped enough to let me have more than 30 to 40 minutes of uninterrupted sleep. Jaeger did a trick and the feeling of waking up rested was such a relief I felt like a new person. I will be forever grateful for that vile sleep potion of drink. The hand sanitizer I just grabbed right next to me is ethanol. I know a lot of distilleries started making hand sanitizer and bottling it in their bottles when the pandemic was first staring. They also used ethanol. I still wouldn't drink them. But many are ethanol, isopropyl alcohol, apropanol, rubbing alcohol, is commonly used in hand sanitizer as well. It is relatively safe and drinking it can cause negative side effects but blindness isn't one of them. Methanol, wood alcohol, is the one that makes you blind if you drink it. And it also evaporates quickly so you can get fumes too. Careful with methanol, I don't think they include that in hand sanitizers lmel. The alcohol in hand sanitizer is propanol, 3 carbon chain. The alcohol that's safe for human consumption in discrete quantities is ethanol. 2 carbon chain, the longer the carbon chain, the more poisonous it is. Propanol can permanently blind you or even kill you, even in small quantities. It's fairly diluted in hand sanitizer which is why you were okay, but that's not a dice you should roll. You're supposed to do this whole ritual for it. I was not so painfully pretentious after college and got a good bottle with the silly little spoon. You pour something that may as well be glowing bright green into a glass. Balance this spoon over the glass and put a few sugar cubes on top and then pour in nice water over the cubes as they dissolve. It did not help. I hate licorice but I wanted to drink the drink. Creator's drink. It burned and the sugar never did anything. Ugh. I loved the little ritual you had to do, at the time, but now. Number. Thankfully my alcoholic friend helped me polish that bottle off or it'd still probably have half of it. Even though I'm not a drinker by a large margin, I did have some exceptional tequila from Mexico. It tasted like warm peach juice, no burning, just a nice sensation in the mouth and throat. Additionally, you mustn't shot it, just a small sip is sufficient. I have tried multiple teakless since then and hated all of them. So I share your thoughts on that one. I'm not much of a dancer, but I had been nursing beers all day while watching some musicians at a festival when the two elderly women joined me and offered me sips from their water bottle. Any other time I would have held my composure, but the crowd, the atmosphere, my previous intoxication, and the music all mixed together to form some deadly concoction that lead me to dance wildly. I vaguely recall throwing my body around before festival security escorted me to my sleeping quarters. Ugh I hate that shit, so co is evil, and so was my stupidity, drinking game many years ago. Two bottles. Four people. 25 minutes, we were taking shots out of mugs and the shots just kept getting bigger and the bottles emptier. I am not good at drinking games. I tended to be the idiot having to drink the most. I passed out soon after, 
Next morning and the following day were worse than hell. Some serious alcohol poisoning was had, and that was the last time I played a drinking game. I can't even smell the stuff now without feeling a vomit coming on. Just thinking about it right now makes me gag. We had training in the Navy on the danger of Forlaco. At the beginning of the training I had no idea what Forlaco was. By the end of it I went straight to the store on the way home and bought two. I am fairly certain it was the orange diesel fuel flavor, but by god it did what they warned us it would do. Knew I was drunk but felt like running a marathon, for about 30 minutes, then just felt like hell. Burnett's Pink Lemonade, long story short. I was a sheltered child that went from a really small school to a large, public university and I knew basically nothing about alcohol. Parents, don't shelter your children, teach them responsibility, abstinence doesn't work. So, I experience a night that has been since known as 12 shots, 20 minutes. That's how I got two strikes in one night freshman year of college. I didn't even do anything crazy, it was the two cops three EMTs, two Ra's and the hall director all of whom made sure I didn't die of alcohol poisoning that got me two strikes due to the amount of resources that was called in. Now almost any Burnett's, especially the pink lemonade, that brings back an enormous taste of shame-filled regret and puke. But hey, you learn the easy way or the hard way. I'm just glad my hard way was hard for me and not hard on my friends and family. Don't underestimate alcohol and drugs. Do your research, kids. Used to work in the casino industry and would go clubbing after work so I never had time to eat beforehand. Took 5 tequila shots on an empty stomach. Next thing I know, I'm hugging the toilet in the restroom and black out again. When I woke up the next day, turns out I lost all motor function and my friends had to get me a wheelchair to leave the casino and carry my ass to the car door. I literally gag when I try to take a tequila shot now. Ha 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 yes, I was thinking, moonshine.prolyappalachia, someone housed you kindly and all you stuff was intact. Appalachia in a college town where no one stole from you, Def could be WV. Marshall doesn't tailgate as hard as WVU. So I replied with my guess, glad you ended up safe from that night and you learned your lesson in a much easier way than you could have. Moonshine, at 19 I shared a jar with a friend at a college tailgate, blacked out and disappeared. I woke up the next morning tucked in on a couch in a living room in a house I had never been to before purse and shoes next to me along with an unopened bottle of water. I had no cash missing. Phone still intact. I was totally alone. So I just got up, left a thank you note in the kitchen, and let myself out. To this day I have no idea how I got there. It was probably about a mile from where I was tailgating, or what kind Samaritan took pity on me. I'm now much more careful. Make sure I follow the buddy system and will never take another sip of homemade moonshine. You have no idea how strong it is so you can't count your drinks. Dude, that's 96% pure, rectified ethanol, 192 proof. You don't drink it raw, you dilute it with 1,5 parts water first. I mean, you can drink it raw, sure. Just make sure to add down it in one shot. B, take a breath before and exhale with your mouth after. Fun fact, in Western Europe spiritus or spirit is considered separate class of alcohol. Not a very strong vodka like in US. Spiritus is basically any grain or potato distilled alcohol over 90% ethanol. You ever had spiritus polanski? It's pretty much the same thing I guess but they give it to insomniacs. Never ever take a full shot glass of it. It will actually take your breath away. Edit. It's mostly sold as Bolmos Spiritus Rectifica any but it was relabeled for some reason in some stores here. After drinking that and other stuff, 
Me and some friends somehow ended up in the next state over at some other part I where we didn't know anyone else. I'm not talking about northeast where you can drive 30 minutes and possibly be two states over. I'm talking when I was living smack dab in the middle of Arizona. My first time drinking it we were all gonna take one shot to start off with and then make riot punch. Only one girl had it before nobody else. It hit the bottom of my throat and I was like yep I just drank something that probably melts tar. Now riot punch is just ever cooler or any pure grain alcohol and this is why you have to take a few shots to get the level down. Packets of Kool-Aid. Just straight up a few packets of Kool-Aid no sugar or nothing. You can mix and match or go one flavor, then just shake up the bottle really good and bam you got riot punch. I highly do not recommend consuming this unless you want to wake up somewhere terribly unexplainable or jail. I woke up completely naked on top of a bush somewhere off campus. Do not remember anything after getting to the parking lot of the football game. It was on Saturday afternoon and I woke up on Monday evening.